Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Shustock HD and we're back with some more of the Stanley Parable. All his co-workers were gone. What could it mean? Stanley decided to go to the meeting room. Perhaps he had simply missed a memo. Alright, so last time, uh, the first time we just listened to every single thing he said, and the second time we disobeyed a few things, like this room. <laughs> when Stanley came to a set of two open doors, he entered the door on his left. I'm probably going to go to the staircase over here and disobey him over here. <laughs> Yet there was not a single person here either. Never. Feeling a wave of disbelief, Stanley decided to go up to his boss's office, hoping he might find a coming to a staircase. Stanley Downstairs walked upstairs it is. Holy lag, Ben. <laughs> Come on. Oh god. Ooh, spooky down here. I swear, this better not have any jump scares in it. I'm not sure if it does. E pressing E makes like this word. Clicking on it. Okay, but this kind of... He just couldn't do it. He considered the possibility of facing um, his boss. Admitting he had left his post during work hours. He might be yes. fired for that. And in such a competitive economy, why had he taken that risk? All because he believed everyone had vanished. His boss would think he was crazy. And then something um, occurred to Stanley. Maybe, he thought to himself, maybe I am crazy. All of my Perhaps I am crazy. Out of existence in a single moment for no reason at all. None of it made any logical sense. And as Stanley pondered this, he began to make other strange observations. For example, why couldn't he see his feet when he looked down? <laughs> the doors close automatically behind him wherever he went. Oh God. And for that matter, these rooms were crossing the fourth wall or whatever it's called, dimension or something like that. No, Stanley said to himself, this is all too strange. This can't be real. And at last, he came to the conclusion fourth that barrier or something like that. Tongue. He just hadn't found the words for it. Gone past it. Oh God. I'm dreaming. He yelled. This is all a dream. Oh, I'm dreaming. Stanley felt to have finally found an answer, <laughs> an explanation. His um. co-workers weren't actually gone. He wasn't going to lose his job. He wasn't crazy after all. And he thought to himself, I suppose I'll wake up soon. I'll have to go right. back to my boring real-life job pushing buttons. I may as well enjoy this while I'm still lucid. I'm not leaving this room until he's done talking. He imagined so. himself flying and began to gently float above the ground. Then no. he imagined himself soaring through space on a magical star field, and no. it too appeared. It was so much fun, and Stanley marveled that he had still not woken up. And that's so dark How in here. remaining so lucid? And then perhaps oh. the strangest question of them all entered Stanley's head. One he was amazed he hadn't asked himself sooner. Why is there a voice in my head dictating everything well, am I doing like and thinking? A forever loop. Now the voice was describing itself. Oh God, I am. By Stanley, who found it particularly strange. I'm dreaming about a voice describing me, thinking about how it's describing my thoughts. He thought. Oh God, no! Involved, Infinite loop maze, no! All people in their dreams. The truth was that, of course, this was not a dream. How could it be? Was Stanley simply deceiving himself? Believing that if he's asleep, he doesn't have to take responsibility for himself. That music is real serious. Awake right now, as he's ever been in his life. Now, this is being awake. To speak these words was quite a shock to Stanley. After all, he knew for certain, beyond a doubt, that this was in fact a dream. Did the voice not seem think it to is. make the magical stars just a moment ago? How else would the voice explain all that? This voice was a part of himself too. Surely, surely, if he could just. He would prove it. He would prove that he was in control. That this was a dream. So he closed his eyes um, gently. And he invited himself okay. to wake up. He felt the cool weight of the blanket on his skin. The press okay, of the mattress on his back. The fresh air of a world outside this one. Let me wake up. This narrator has a very soothing I'm voice. through with this dream. I wish it to be over. Let me go back to my job. Let me continue pushing the buttons. Please. That's the life. It's all pushing I Pushing buttons. I want my apartment and my wife and my job. 
All I want is my life exactly the way it's always been. My life is normal. I am normal. Everything will be fine. Who does that? I <laughs> am okay. I've always got a little shaky at the end there. I am okay. And I'm still in here. Stanley began screaming. Please, someone, wait oh God. Me up. My name is Stanley. I have a All right, boss. this music's creeping me out. I am real. <laughs> Please, just someone tell me I am real. I must be real. I must be. Can anyone hear Oh, God. No, this is getting... This is terrifying. And everything went black. Um. This is the story of a woman named Mariella. What? Mariella woke up on a day like any other. She arose, got dressed, gathered um, her belongings, and walked to her place of work. But on this Watch particular us? day, her walk was interrupted by the body of a man who had stumbled through town talking and screaming to himself, and then collapsed dead on the sidewalk. Ah, oh, I was on a bunch of hallucinogen drugs. To go call for an ambulance, That's it. For just a few brief moments, she oh, that crazy. I just... He was obviously crazy. Took way too many drugs. Pop too many pills or something. And in that moment, she thought to herself how lucky she was to be normal. I well, lucky for her. I am in control of my mind. I know what is real and what isn't. Who thinks that when I see a dead body? To think this, and in a certain way, seeing this man made her feel better. That's then a, she you're a terrible person. She had scheduled for that day. The very important people whose impressions of her would affect her career, and by extension, the rest of her life. She had no time for this, so it was only a moment that she stood there, staring down at the body. And then she turned and ran. <laughs> I, hey, she forgot her suitcase. She just left it there on the ground. That's not very responsible of her. Huh. Alright, so next episode we're going to... Uh go to the right door again and not unplug the phone so let's see how that goes next episode